Recently, we replaced the calipers on Rob's 2007 Nissan Altima due to a malfunction. A malfunctioning caliper can lead to the inability to stop your vehicle. Signs of a malfunctioning caliper are uneven brake pad wear, unusual noises while driving and or braking, brake fluid leaking from the caliper, braking power reduced, vehicle may pull to one side or the other, and finally, it may feel like the brakes are engaged while driving. Now a few of these signs can be related to poor quality brake pads or even warped rotors, but since Rob had a few of these signs and since he was planning on changing the pads and rotors anyway, he made the decision to change the calipers as well. After changing the vehicle's calipers, you must bleed your brakes to remove all air in the brake lines or else your brakes may fail when you need them the most. When bleeding brakes, typically the rule of thumb is to bleed the caliper furthest away from the master cylinder first and then work your way towards the closest caliper. In most vehicles, that means you will need to bleed the calipers in the following order. Passenger rear first, driver rear second, passenger front third, and finally, driver side front last. However, always consult your owner's manual first just in case the manufacturer stays different. In the case of this 2007 Nissan Altima, the correct way to bleed the brake calipers is passenger rear first, driver front second, driver rear third, and finally, passenger front last. Now before you begin bleeding your brakes, make sure you remove the brake bleeder valve cap and make sure you have a clear tube that can fit snug over the bleeder valve. The reason you want to use a clear tube is to give you the ability to see air coming out of the bleeder valve. While bleeding, if you see air bubbles coming out of the bleeder valve into the clear tube, you want to keep bleeding until all air bubbles are removed. The process for bleeding brakes is very simple if you have another person to help you. If you are by yourself, you can still bleed your brakes, however the process takes a little longer. Since Rob and I are bleeding the brakes, we will show you the two-person method. Once your bleeder valve cap is removed and you have the clear tube over the bleeder valve and the proper wrench on the bleeder screw, the person in the car will need to press the brakes. Once the brakes are pressed, the other person can turn the bleeder screw into the open position. Now, when the person in the car feels the brake pedal hit the floor, he or she will need to notify the person with the wrench to close the bleeder valve. The person should then close the bleeder valve and then the person in the car can lift off of the brake pedal. Repeat these steps until there aren't any more visible air bubbles in the clear tube. Proceed to the next caliper and repeat the process.